As many of you recognize, the Oak Ridge people uh, has constructed a uh, molten salt experimental reactor, MSRE, in 1960s. But it was 50 years ago. And at that time, uh, there was no NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Committee, uh, at that time. Uh, so uh, no one has ever submitted guidelines for MSR accident analysis. So uh, I will show the first draft of these topics. And the details are shown in these references. One of them was explained at the previous uh, terminology conference. A forum is International Sodium Molten Salt Forum. This is a non-profit organization established in 2008. The first president was Dr. Kazuo Furuka, and he, there are members, uh, researchers, and uh, uh, engineers, besides students, who are interested in the molten salt reactor and related uh, sodium cycles. Uh, so far, we had uh, 10 seminars in Japan and some ex uh, several international presentations. Uh, this photo is taken in this year, more than 100 people gathered. And this in, is a conference in London, as many of you attended. SOIMNES stands for Solid Molten Salt Nuclear Energy System, based on the three uh, following principles using sodium, uh, using molten fluoride. And the important point is the separation of electric power generation and missile breeding facility. This is because uh, fission reaction produces uh, large energy, uh, but few neutrons. As you may know, uh, in fission reactions, only a couple of the neutrons is produced. On the other hand, the sporation reaction produces many neutrons, but small energies. So the separation of these facilities is important. Uh, next slide is the solemnness configuration. Uh, there is a lineup of molten salt reactors uh, from small to large for power generations. And here is the lineup of official breathing facility, the AMSB. And in between these two facilities, there is a chemical processing plant which handles the fuel salt for molten salt reactors and some right, molten salt for these AMSBs. But it will take some long time to develop the AMSB. So before we establish the AMSBs, the MSR needs a fissile element. So <coughs> uh, spent fuel are uh, reprocessed and recycled protein can be used to the initial fissile of these molten salt reactors. Uh, next slide is a bird eye view of the MSR Fuji for power generations. Uh, here is the reactor, and this is a reactor building. And the second one is a uh, building for steam generators. And the last one is a turbine generator building. And the AMSB for fissile production. The AMSB stands for Accelerator Molten Salt Building Facility, which is similar to the ADS. Uh, composed of these uh, parts. The important point are high energy proton accelerators. The proton beam is injected to the rotating molten salt. And in here, the sodium is converted to fissile uranium 2003. And some of the heat are recovered as a uh, power. I will show some of our design results. Uh, this is a result for a small size Fuji U3 design using uranium-233 storing fuel, assuming uh, the electric output of 200 megawatt electric. And these are some design results. And you can see the uh, conversion ratio throughout the cycle as 1.01. That means the self-sustaining is possible. The right-size super-fuji design, assuming 
1,000 megawatt electric, and this is some design results. So, uh, right side Fuji is also possible. This is a Fuji PU design using plutonium storing fuel. Uh, this is one primary design of uh, Fuji PU. And for this case, we assumed 100 megawatt X north side plant. So, if we normalize this result to right side plant of one year operations, Fuji PU can decrease uh, more than 900 kg proton missile and uh, produce more than 400 kg uranium fissile in a year. And the transmutation possibility of my nacotinide by Super Fuji, uh, in here the nacotinide means uh, neptunium, americium, and curium. Uh, compared to three typical reactor designs, uranium PWR and MOXPR and the final lines are sodium motors of reactors. Uh, there are some design parameters and uh, you can see the better transmission in the MSO, but this may, some of the reason is, uh, as you understand, uh, MSO is applying the sodium fuel, so it does not produce minor actinite. Now the topics on the guidelines for MSO guide. And uh, I will show the whole paper is for so, uh, you want, uh, I will distribute. The first slide is the classification of reactor status. In most of the time, the reactor is operated in normal operations, but uh, it includes uh, uh, startup and uh, shutdown time. Uh, besides normal operations, there is a abnormal operating transient, which is caused by a single error or a single malfunction. And beyond abnormal transient, there is a so-called design basis accident or DBA, uh, which causes uh, spill failure in light water reactor case. And beyond the DBA, there are some rare accidents called a uh, severe accident, like uh, Fukushima or Chernobyl. Uh, the severe accident is an event beyond the DBAs, which will cause uh, a meltdown for light water reactor case. But in this study, we include these two, three cases just as an accident. Because as we understand that the failure failure is impossible in molten salt reactors and for meltdown is also meaningless in the MSR. So categorize. Categorizing these three accidents will be discussed later. Uh, radioactivity release in MSR is caused by a rupture of primary poop boundaries. So, classify to the following two cases. The A is external cause accident, and B is internal cause accident. Uh, difference of external and internal is external cause accident is caused by the event outside the reactor building. And I define the internal cause accident is mainly uh, reactor building and some related facilities. Uh, there are totally uh, 40 accident scenarios exist, but uh, I will explain some of them. The external cause accident is initiated by the external event such as earthquake, tsunami, flood, uh, window, fire, turbine missiles, or terrorism, and so on. There are other accidents as follows, which are caused by the initiating event outside the reactor building, but affect the reactor. Uh, the turbine trip or generator trip or this kind of accident. But uh, these are generic accidents, so uh, these are not discussed here. The B is the internal cause accident. The integrity of primary loop may be lost by overheat because uh, field temperature is proportional to power by flow. So, number one category is a power increase accident or ROA or reactivity initiated accident, for example, control rod ejection accident. Number two category is a flow decrease accident, for example, fuel salt pump stopping accident. 
Yeah. There are other causes are overpressure or some mechanical failures and so on. So we need a number three category, the fail throat leak accident, for example, rupture of primary loop pipes or something. And the last category is the accident. Uh, these are mostly specific to MSR, for example, uh, molten salt freeze accident. Now some of the, uh, these accidents are described below. The first one is the power increased accident or ROIA. 1.01 is a controlled withdrawal or ejection accident. This is the most typical uh, reactivity initiated accident. In normal operation, the control, these controls are withdrawn, but if the control load is inserted, and then if this control load is withdrawn or ejected accidentally, then positive reactivity is inserted. So this is some example data, some uh, power excursions for increase of uh, phase of temperatures. In this case, control load scrum is not assumed, so this is a very severe condition. But the consequence is limited, owing to a small reactivity insertion and negative reactivity coefficient. 1.02 is a cold loop startup accident. If well thought is inadvertently restarted from standby condition, then cold of well thought is injected, and then positive reactivity is inserted. In normal operation, well thought is circulating, and when primary drop pump is stopping, but if this pump inadvertently restarted, then cold salt is injected, so uh, positive reactivity is inserted. But the consequence is limited because uh, lowest possible temperature of fair salt is a melting temperature. Uh, if fair salt is more cold than current status, uh, same consequence will occur, but I will skip this. 1.08 is a depressurization accident. In MSR, a small amount of helium bubbles are circulating uh, within the primary loop to remove uh, gaseous xenon, krypton, or some tritium. So, if depressurization occurs, uh, bubbles become larger and positive reactivity is inserted. In normal operations, the fuel salt is circulating and more amount of helium is also circulating. So if depreciation occurs in somewhere in this group, the bubbles become larger and the positive reactivity is inserted. This is some example data by the authors, and here are some power excursions. But the consequence is limited because the amount of helium bulb is small. The next is a flow decrease accident. 2.02 is a pump trip accident or pump seizure accident. So if pump stops or pump shaft is stuck, then threshold flow oh, stops or becomes almost zero. Threshold cooling is impossible. And the threshold uh, temperature will decrease in, or exceed increase. Uh, this is some example result for pump seizure accident. The difference of pump trip and pump seizure is uh, pump trip accident, uh, natural circulation is possible because there is a uh, free rotation of pump impellers. So uh, cooling is possible nat by natural circulation. But in pump seizure accident, a pump shaft is stuck. So there is very little uh, flow leak, and this case is more severe. So, oh, in some severe cases, well salt must be drained. 2.04 oh, is a loss of secondary cooling accident. This is similar to the primary loop. Well salt is circulating in normal operation, and also oh, secondary salt is also circulating. Oh, this secondary pump stops the cooling function is lost. So the temp temperature of fuel salt 
will increase. And in some severe cases, uh, where the salt must be drained, uh, same consequence will occur by rupture of secondary loop or by steam generator failure. 2.05 and 6 is a loss of decay heat cooling accident. So after the reactor is shut down, well salt must be cooled down because it has a decay heat. So decay heat cooling system is required if well salt is not drained. And if well salt is drained, uh, then you need some cooling system. And MSBR by the Oak Ridge propose a passive uh, cooling system or drain tank also. 3.01 is a primary loop brake accident. If rupture or brake at the vessel, pipes, pumps, and heat exchangers, or uh, some other reason by uh, pressure or heat, then the integrity of the loop is lost, and the field salt will leak out. Here's the reactors and the pipes or some heat exchangers. These are confined in the uh, containment. And if there is a break, uh, the fuel salt will leak out and collect it uh, to a drain tank. Uh, last question is the other accident, uh, mostly stick to the MSR. The 4.01 is a steam generator break accident. Uh, vapor pressure in MSR is very low, and over pressure accident is incredible. The only one exception is the SG break accident. If SG breaks, uh, 25 megapascal high pressure steam is injected into the second loop. Uh, if there is a break in the steam generators, uh, high pressure steam will be injected to the secondary loop. So in order to avoid propagation to the primary loop, some protection system must be equipped, such as isolation valve or rupture disc. 4.03 is a free salt freeze accident. Uh, volume of frozen fuel salt is about 50% uh, smaller than the molten salt fuel salt. So freezing itself is not a problem. Uh, the only accidental scenario is a fuel salt freezing at heat exchangers. Uh, because the index temperature of secondary salt is lower than the freezing temperature of fuel salt. So uh, this occurs if primary pump stops, but the secondary pump does not stop. Uh, normal operation to these two loops are circulating. If primary loop stops, but uh, secondary loop does not stop, then here Fair salt is overcooled. Uh, this is kind of overcooled accident. Uh, Fair salt freezing starts here. So in some severe cases, fair salt must be drained. Uh, 4.06 is a freeze valve failure accident. Opening of freeze valve is just to switch off a uh, valve cooling system. So failure probability of freeze valve is very low, but it is not zero. Uh, no, in a more operation, we switch on the cooling loop, and this frozen salt stops the molten salt flow. If we switch off this cooling system, then molten salt flows downward. But it takes some time. So uh, since freeze valve is the last countermeasure to keep the integrity of primary loop boundary, so Verification is required. Or uh, faster mechanical valve or rupture disk may be equipped. The last accident is the rupture of containment issue. In any of the above accident, the containment made of uh, high temperature containment and reactor building uh, prevent or mitigate or radioactivity release. Uh, this is some concept of Fuji and the a uh, reactor vessel and high temperature containment made of concrete plus a steel layers and the uh, outer boundary is uh, reactor building 
uh, made of concrete plus steel liners. So totally there are six layers. Uh, based on the above all scenarios, uh, loss of these containment integrity is incredible, but possible damages must be evaluated. Okay, that's why right that's my conclusion. Number one, is, uh, 40 possible accidents for MSR are specified. Number two, in several accident scenarios, uh, fair salt must be transferred to a drain tank. And this system shares high safety of MSR. However, the consequence depends on freeze valve function because its operation is slow. And this means that some verification is required. Number three, also some other accident needs quantitative evaluation. Number four, as a summary of this report, it can be concluded that MSRO has a superior safety, and it may be concluded that MSRO has a intrinsic safety after completion of these evaluations. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Hello, it's Mark Ho from uh, Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organization. I'd just like to ask uh, what kind of 1D thermohydraulic codes are you using for your um, accident scenarios and transients? Are you asking the process of uh, the accident scenarios? Or? Um, that's like as in, say, like uh, relap or, or with the French code like Qatar, the kind of transient 1D codes that you're using for the accident scenarios? Oh, I think, of course, uh, it depends on some design philosophy. Uh, so um, I showed uh, the basic design concept of these accident scenarios. So the accident scenario depends on the design. Also, it depends on some safety designs. So uh, some of them uh, should be defined later. So it may be defined for country country or design by design, and those kind of things uh, should be discussed among these people, and also we have to discuss with licensing bodies. But unfortunately, uh, the knowledge in the licensing body on MSR is small, so uh, this kind of uh, conference will be helpful for all that in discussions. Thank you. Uh, hi, Mark, Mark Halper, blogging for the Weinberg Foundation. Uh, that freeze valve is the ultimate superhero of the uh, molten salt reactor safety. Yes. So to hear you uh, concerned about uh, it possibly malfunctioning, that it uh, operates slowly and therefore maybe things won't work, is, um, is of note. And, and I'm, I'm just wondering, to what extent are you, um, are you wondering about its, um, its efficiency and its ability to uh, rise to the occasion. Well, if you mean by efficiency, it's uh, perfect. The problem is that there is some progress of the accident. There is a competition between the progress of accident and the operation of the functioning of freeze bubble. So that kind of competition in some uh, experimental or numerical verifications. That is what I, uh, I said in this uh, presentation. The efficiency it is not, I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Do you make some simulation Listen, for the, this case? A regulation? Simula make simulation for this case. Ah, simulation. Yeah. Well, this is, uh, I have shown some of the uh, data or curves. Uh, these are based on numerical uh, result by simulation code. And uh, each of the uh, resources, uh, source of these calculations are shown in these references. What is you based, what is, what do you based on? Uh, your conclusion? The base of the calculations? Your conclusion based on, what is, what does your conclusion based on? Oh, I, I asking the con basis of all these guidelines. Uh, what? Well, I have two topics. First is the design result. And I, my main topic is related on the topic of uh, guidelines of accident. As for the guidelines, 
Uh, the basis is difficult to explain. Uh, some of the basis came from uh, the experience for light water reactors, plus uh, my knowledge on molten salt reactors. Is that OK for you? Probably OK. Uh, maybe may this cut to speak in short time. OK, I know. OK, please also hear the question. Yeah, um, I'm not sure I understood exactly which system you're simulating here, but assuming ah. it's a thorium-based fuel, ah, yeah. which has been running for some time, you have a significant inventory of uh, protactinium-233. You did not consider what happens in case you cannot extract the protactinium and then this thing decays into U233 and you get a delta K over K of 2 to 2.5 percent that could make it supercritical. Ah. Did I miss it or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have shown some uh, design result. Uh, the basis of this in the first uh, U3 design, that is the basis of most of the calculations. But uh, some of the calculations are based on the MSBR data on Oak Ridge. So anyway, it's a graphite modulated, uh, mostly uranium-233 sodium fuel, uh, liquid fuel. I did not understand the, uh, so probably the, the you answer. Can discuss after this session, OK? Is it, uh, after, after probably you can decide very detailed. So. OK, there are some other questions? OK, there are no more questions. And uh, thank you, Yoshika-san.